Hello, and welcome to the conclusion of Transmediale 2021-22 for Refusal, a year-long festival that has explored the sociopolitical agency of refusal and its potential for new political possibilities. Over the last year, we have departed from our usual format and adapting to the COVID-19 pandemic, the festival has spread itself across the year through online and in-person events. For Refusal existed as exhibitions, installations, a summer camp and an outdoor cinema and not least a digital almanac, the Almanac for Refusal, that every month on the full moon published a series of conversations, artworks, essays and videos that explored the material, social, economic, political and technical manifestations of Refusal. Our aim with making this very long edition of the festival was to explore and build an understanding of a large variety of different political uh, acts of refusal. Over the year, we have heard how everyday strategies of civic dis disobedience support collective demands in Hong Kong, heard stories of infrastructural resistance to climate change, and reconnected with Kerogen, an ancient fossilized be being naming a king. The festival has worked together with many artists, designers, researchers and activists and in their work they pointed to tactics of refusal that potentially could form the framework for considering how sociopolitical realities can be grounded in care, hope and desire. As we reach the end of this inquiry, the conclusion to the festival explores and confronts the pragmatic realities and the hard limits of both refusal and hope especially in the context of a computationally ordered and altered world. Of course, there are many benefits and advantages to technological inv invitation and transformation. And yet, despite these, digital systems rely on increased surveillance, atomization and oppression and have over many decades caused harm when used and applied ubiqu ubiquitously. Yet, despite these deteriorating uh, social, economic and environmental conditions, our cruel attachments and the need for technologies remain steadfast and in place and have generated futures and presents where our everyday life has been financially tokenized and unachievable utopian fantasies of immortality through cryogenic freezing are sold through private German healthcare insurance for only 40 euros a month. So the conclusion to this year-long festival asks many questions. It asks questions about the role that refusal plays in negotiating and opening up new values of calculation and computation. It explores the contradictions and gap that computation produces and maps out the sociopolitical realities and conditions that emerge from extraction and accumulation, morality and fantasy, fragmented reasoning and compromise. Our speakers today bring into focus the strange realities of technology and lay out acts of refusal that reject the seduction and desires of technological promises and logic. Before we begin, I just wanted to take some a moment to thank very many people that have actually uh, made up and been a huge part of actually the festival, both in front and behind the scenes. In realizing this work, I've been very uh, lucky to work with a fantastic curatorial team that is made up of Ben Evans James, the film curator, Danny Admis, one of the symposium curators, Elise Mishao Honchak, uh, the editorial and uh, also another symposium curator, Edna Bonholm, Lorena Juan, our exhibition curator, Louisa Prado, and Terence Sharp, whose dedication, support, and expertise has guided and enriched, enriched the festival in so many different ways. I'd also like to thank my team whose work and dedicated support behind the scenes have over the past year been the driving force behind everything that unfolded during the festival. This wonderful team includes Filippo, the managing director, Magdalena, the finance manager, and the programming communication administration teams that include Annalena, Anki, Anne Christine, Ricarda, Katya, Jade, Manon, and Nora, yes, another Nora, Paul, Lucas, Lynn and Eunice. Finally, I wanted to take a quick moment here to say that all of this is not possible without the continued support of our main funders and supporters. Kulturstiftung des Bundes, with a special thanks to Hortensia Volkers and Kirsten Haas. The Bernal, 
the Berlin Senat Department for Culture in Europe, Medium Board Berlin Brandenburg, and the European Union Horizon 2020 program, Arts Formation. Over the year, we've had the pleasure of working with old and new partners, including our sister festival, CTM, our exhibition venue partner, Academy de Kunste and Silent Green, our program partners, Junge Academy of Academy der Kunste, Goethe Institute Slovakia, Aarhus University, and our funders and supporters, including the Embassy of Canada to Germany, Culture Ireland, the, Fund the Cultural Foundation of the German Federal State, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Cultures, Arts and Heritage of Chile, the University of Limerick, the Mondrian Fund, the Danish Arts Council, <coughs> the Embassy of Ireland, Culture Gemeinde in Schaften, the French Institution Berlin, and our media partners, and not least, our long-standing partner, supporter, and host for the next two days, has the culture developed. For those here in Berlin, we really hope that you can join us this evening and also tomorrow evening for a film night and a closing keynote de delivered by Bong Chul Han that unpacks the role of idleness and inaction as a deliberate political act of refusal. I'm now going to pass you over to one of our symposium curators, Elise, who will now take us through the day. Thank you. Welcome to Transmediale 2022 and the symposium, This is not anarchy, this is chaos. The first nine minutes of this year's symposium was an invitation to immersion and to inhabitation, extended by Che Applewhite in their speculative documentary, I Am the World. They asked us to stop and to imagine. Imagine your eyes are new to you. You don't know how to look at the first person you see. Their hands, their voice, their feet, their spirit, all are multiple, all sense and information garbled and glitched. They meet your gaze, unknowing quite how to know. You turn to the thing you use to confirm that you see the same as everyone else. A website, a publisher, a metaverse? How would I know its name? You are there, you can name it better than I can. Everything is corrupted, but for a few images, what might these images be? Over the next two days, we will bring you some images. We will bring them to you in a string of films and performances and lectures and conversations. There will be sounds and sometimes there will be silence. Some of us are here, as Nora already said, at the HKV in Berlin. And some of our participants, like you, our audience, will be joining us online from around the world. Over the past year, through the Almanac for Refusal, Transmediale has mapped out the political agency of refusal. Each of us came to this conversation with our own subjective perspectives and understandings, but we came together over an understanding of refusal as the possibility of a strategic and generative act. One, that according to Audra Simpson, the political anthropologist and Kanawake Mohawk, opens up possibilities for the imagination and the enactment of new subjectivities, of new understandings of history, and of new ways of living that lie outside of the state. At the beginning of last year, and as the year progressed, it seemed to us at Transmediale that the dilemma for refusal never felt quite so urgent. And it's possible to say, somehow, that it continues to feel this way today. Evidence, facts, and reason continue to be obscured in the context of algorithms, platforms, misinformation, the fake news, the false flag operations that states and others are, right now, to the east of us, increasingly deploying. And as digital technologies are used to distribute and mediate these differing beliefs, unstable landscapes are continuing to be produced where unconfirmed facts are hardened and ossified into truths, where morality is wielded over the use of carbon intensive technologies, to name but a few. I could go on, but we need to save something for the next two days. As a result, reason and knowledge, already deeply subjective, are put under further pressure, sometimes breaking irrevocably so. And though new technologies are amplifying, 
um, these conflicts, these exacerbations are not new, as we will see over the next two days. Belief, the theme of today's program, has long been a fundamental factor for making sense of the world and navigating the world, made by in the interrelations that move and meet between desire, emotion, context, experience, and yes, reason, the abstraction of belief can also instigate and be a starting point for refusal, marking a moment or a point of a limit having been reached. And it's th this very elasticity of refusal as a concept and as a practice that does not follow a linear path. And as the almanac for refusal has shown us over and over and over again this past year, the conditions for refusal are often shared but not always agreed upon. As a matter of context and perspective, compromise, the theme of tomorrow's program, opens possibilities for the rejection of hierarchies and the reconfiguration of relations rather than the simple ending of them. And as a framework for refusal, compromise can become a necessary relation to understanding political and economic and social processes and whether to take part in them and how. But belief and compromise are not meant to be understood as standalone or oppositional concepts. Instead, as we brought together the symposium, we understood them more and more as always existing in relation to each other. Over the course of the next two days then, the participants will bring with them different modes and practices of refusal. We hope to highlight these moments and forms of relation through their adjacencies, their overlaps, their frictions, and yes, sometimes oppositions. For refusal is an act that carries risk and it carries promise. It opens up possibilities for worlds that can and sometimes should be. Over these next two days, we hope to explore with all of you, the audience and the participants, how these tactics of refusal can form an assemblage of collective political responsibilities. The symposium is being live streamed on our website, transmediale.de, and there is no registration necessary. We invite questions and discussions between the audience and the symposium participants through our Transmediale Telegram group. To take part in this discussion, please first subscribe to our Telegram channel, t.me forward slash Transmediale, and then join our separate group, t.me forward slash Transmediale underscore group. Instructions as well as the entire symposium program can be found on our website as well. Nora began the day by thanking the extraordinary Transmediale team, as well as the house, the Hakeve team, all of whom have done so much to support us, again, in front of, behind the scenes, um, and the us being Nora, myself, and the symposium co-curators, Ben Evans-James and Danny Admis, and the exhibition curator, Lorena Wan, and of course, all of the participants as we worked to bring the symposium to you, wherever you might be <clears throat> and whenever you might watch this. And so I would like to take this moment to echo her thanks to everyone, including Paul Schmidt, our producer. But in particular, I'd actually like to take a moment to thank Nora, who as an artistic director, as a curator and a force of nature, has shown us over this past year how to move through difficult times with care and with grace and with integrity and demonstrated every day how to live and embody the very politics we claim to support. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work with you and I hope that you're able to enjoy these next two days. And I hope that you, our audience, are also able to enjoy these next two days. And so we continue our scheduled programming with a lecture, a film, an experimental lecture film uh, by Robert Gerard Pietrusco, an architect, composer, and educator based in Brooklyn, New York. His research and his practice focus on the history and speculative design potential of environmental media. He's currently an associate professor of landscape architecture at the University of Pennsylvania. And in his talk, 
he will explore the remarkable optimism of conspiracy theories and the ways in which they might be reconfigured to reimagine configurations of politics, of institutions, of finance, and of technology. So please join us in welcoming Robert Gerard Pietrusco as he explores the imaginative potential of these conspiratorial styles of reasoning, proposing a dark optimism as a new and necessary episteme for living with global uncertainty. Welcome to Transmediale 2022 and welcome to chaos.